With the DVX system, there are different pre-programmed zones within the layout of a Dactronix video display. Depending on the size of the display, there are multiple zones available for content playback. Overlay zones present content on top of a full screen zone. Zoning layout 1 overlays a second content zone on top of a full screen zone. Zoning layout 2 scales down the full screen to a smaller zone while adding a second zone below and a third zone to the right. When you create content in Content Studio or go to Display Items from Display Studio, these other zones will be available for you based on your display size. Here are examples of Zoning Layout 1. Here are examples based on Zoning Layout 2, with a bottom bar on the bottom and a sidebar on the right hand side, and live video surrounding it. The following videos will show you basic operation of the Show Control System software. With live data integration and a host of powerful tools to customize your venue, Dactronic Show Control System lets you create, layer, control, monitor, time, and customize more easily and impressively than ever before. Welcome to the Dactronic Show Control System, a bold new way to enhance and manage live event production. The Show Control System is designed to bring exciting content to your events, simplification to your operators, and scalability to your needs. It creates powerful digital content through the Content Studio and allows you, the user, more control on how you display and manage that content through the Display Studio. With live data integration and a host of powerful tools to customize for your venue, Dactronic Show Control Systems lets you create, layer, control, monitor, time and customize more easily and impressively than before. The menu of this training will allow you to start, stop, skip and repeat any sections you choose and you can always call 1-800-325-8766 for any support. For your first time viewing we recommend watching from start to finish to get the most out of this tutorial and the most out of Dactronic's show control system. Enjoy! To open up Dactronic Show Control System, double click the Display Studio icon from your desktop. If this is the first time Display Studio will be licensed, you will be taken directly to the Licensing Details window. Click Change Current Licensing to open the Licensing Options window, then click Register. In the How Would You Like to Acquire a License window, you can select the option to call Dactronix or email Dactronix. If you select the Call Dactronix option, you'll be taken to a contact page with the information you need to provide to Dactronix and instructions. If you choose to email Dactronix, be sure that you've entered the requested information in the form and click Finish. This will transfer your information into an email message to be sent to software activation at Dactronics.com. You will receive your licensing details within 24 to 48 hours. Once you've received, you should save the file attachment included in the email to your desktop. Now you can activate your software. Click Change Current Licensing to open the Select Licensing Options window. This time click Activate. In the How You Would Like to Add Licensing Details window, select Add License from File and then browse for the licensing file you saved to your desktop. After selecting, click Open then click Finish. From the Dactronix Display Studio Home, the button in the upper left hand corner opens the Display Studio main menu. The small pencil on the right hand side launches the Dactronix Content Studio application. In short, the Content Studio is where you create or composite your content and the Display Studio is where you manage the operations of your content you've created. For example, using your game script as a reference, you can prepare the type of content needed, then easily set up workspaces that will lead to a successful event. We'll begin by launching Content Studio. Content Studio is a content compositor that allows you to combine text, data, images and animations into presentations for your display. More complex graphics can be created in outside programs and then imported directly into Content Studio. Notice the tabs across the top. 
The Home tab is where you can add new layouts, adjust font styles, sizes, and colors, and select preset backgrounds and spell check. Under the Insert tab, there are buttons that help you edit or enhance graphics, create paging, scrolling text, import pictures and videos, and create text boxes. Under the Format tab, you'll find ways to add color fills, gradients, borders, and arrange the content on each layout. Finally, the View tab allows you to zoom in and out of your layout, show and hide elements, and preview your presentation. The Media Library is where you can browse for images and videos. Use the drop-down menu to browse to the desired file location. Next, select Search. To import a picture, simply drag and drop an image to your workspace. Note the Image Import box that allows you to choose its positioning prior to import. For example, dock left or center. Now click Import. Right above the ribbon, there are quick buttons that let you create a new presentation, open an existing presentation, save your work, undo, and redo. The bottom left of the Content Studio screen helps you navigate between your presentation timeline, which shows the duration of your layouts and elements playing in your presentation. There is also a layout storyboard where you can quickly change the order of your layout and add transitions. Now that you understand the overall look and feel of Content Studio, take some time to get more familiar with the buttons and tabs that we discussed. Here in our new presentation, we will now add some text. Note this line at the top of our timeline. This means we are currently working with just one layout and it's five seconds long. To add text, simply double click inside the layout to get your flashing cursor then simply, simply begin typing your text. To change the font, highlight the text and pull down the bar in the font section. You'll see a variety of fonts to choose from. The fonts at the top are true type fonts found on your computer. As you scroll down, you'll also find Dactronics fonts which were designed specifically for Content Studio. We'll select Arial for this tutorial. Notice we can also change our font size, for example, to 32. Another way to change the font size is to use these arrow buttons. And to make a message really pop, you can change the font color. Pick from one of the font colors on this chart or from the custom color graph. You can also make text bold or italic. This button, the one with the two A's on it, smooths out your text, which is a good practice to use on your digital displays. The one with the S puts a shadow on the text. You can also add outlines to your text by clicking this button, another good practice to help in readability. To move the text where you want it, simply click on the paragraph buttons. First, let's center this text horizontally then vertically. Now the text is right in the middle of your screen. Another way to add text is to click the text box in the quick insert section of the home tab. The mouse arrow is then replaced with a box. Simply click anywhere on your canvas to add a new text box. Notice our timeline shows the addition of a new text box. You can also move the text box Simply click on it and hold down the left mouse button while you move around and use or use the directional arrows on your keyboard. If you need to resize your text box, it's even easier. Just click outside of the area and click, on, click and drag on any of these little squares. Now you can resize the text box to your preference. Right now this box is highlighted and we can change its position on the layout by clicking and dragging on it. To edit the text, just double click inside the area highlighted on your layout and make any desired changes. Now let's add an image to our display. Content Studio can import PNG, bitmaps, GIFs, JPEGs, PSDs, and TIFF files. 
First, go to the media library and find a picture to bring into your layout. Simply click on the image and drag it from your media library onto your layout window. We can position the image using the buttons at the bottom. The square around the picture is a tool that makes it easy to crop the image. From the options tab, we can also control the brightness and contrast of the image here, or make it black and white. Let's leave the image in color for now. Next, we need to get the image under our layout. When creating graphics that will be imported, remember to always create them in the pixel size of your display. This will allow the image to import as it was intended. From the options tab, we can also pick an import mode. By choosing best fit, the aspect ratio stays the same while resizing. If you pick stretch from the import mode, you can stretch the image and change its aspect ratio. If you choose normal, we cannot change the size or the aspect ratio in the layout, but can crop the image. Notice the difference between these three modes. Remember, you can also perform any of these functions using the right-click method. Finally, let's add some text to our image by simply clicking the text box. Here we can enter text and, and add information to our image. Your display is also capable of handling video. Content Studio takes several formats for video. Uncompressed AVI, MP4, MPG, and MPEG. It's easy to bring each of these types of files in. It works the same way as importing an image. When creating animations that will be imported, remember to always create them to the pixel size of your display. This will allow the animation to import as intended and, in, and limit any distortions. Let's go to our media library, click on the video tab, and drag and drop the video titled Calendar. Let's pick Best Fit. This way we can resize the video to fit any area we want. You can also take a still frame image from an existing animation. On your top menu options, choose Media Item, then Picture. This allows you to browse through your animation files and select one. Choose the Video Frame tab at the bottom and use your slider to go forward or backwards in the video where you want to take the frame. Once you have decided on that image, click Import and you now have a picture instead of a video in your content editor. Now we can add text on top of this image by adding text boxes. Let's review a few other features here in the Content Studio. One is the slider bar on the lower right. Here we can adjust the view size of our layout by simply sliding it to the left or to the right. Or we can click the percentage key and enter your own figure. To your left, you will see a green bar that shows your presentation file size. Simply move your mouse over this to see use space and free space. When you are using a display and equipment capable of showing live video, you will need to create a green background in Content Studio for the video processor to key in the video image. This process is similar to watching the weather on TV and the meteorologist is standing in front of a green screen. That superimposes the weather map behind them. To create your green background, click on the Format tab on the top ribbon. Click the color picker arrow underneath the scroll bar to bring up the custom color palette. Choose the More Colors option from the menu. To add the proper values for live video, simply select Green 247, Red 0, and Blue 0 as your background color, and Save File as Live Video for future use. The Green 247 background file tells your sign that any live video being shot will be placed here. Once sent to the display, the green is replaced with your live video. To create scrolling text, open a new presentation. Select the Insert tab, then select Scrolling Text. 
the scrolling text import window will open. This will step you through each process to create a scrolling text in your presentation. Start typing a scrolling text sentence in the white field. Once it's complete, you can change the font style and font size. Now, as you mouse over each button along the middle, you can change the text style, whether making it bold or italic, changing the color, and putting a shadow on it. You even have access to a spell check button as well if needed. After you formatted the text to your preference, now select Next. In this next window, we can select the direction of our scroll. Since we have typed our text into one line, we'll choose Left, meaning the text will come in from the right side and scroll to the left. Had we entered our text in a vertical pattern, you could choose to scroll up or down. Go back to left and now select next. In this window we can select the speed of the scroll from a super slow crawl to something super fast. Review all these features on your own and adjust the speed settings that will best match your message to your audience. You can also preview the scrolling text. If you like what you see, select import. If you want to make a change, you can select previous to navigate to a previous view. Or, if you've already selected import, you can double click on the text box and it will reopen the scrolling text import window for you to make changes. Here we have a presentation that's been laid out basically how we want it to look. Now all we need to do is adjust its timing. For this example, we've added one background image and five separate text boxes. Now, on the bottom of Content Studio, these are all represented by individual lines in the Timeline Editor. The Timeline Editor allows you to set timing of each element in your layout. Let's first go to the Layout line and increase that to 20 seconds, simply by clicking the end and dragging it all the way to the 20 second mark. This signifies that your entire layout will be 20 seconds long. Let's do the same for our background image, so our background image shows up for the entire time of our layout. Using the Timeline Editor, we will now set up our question to display the entire time. To adjust your text to appear the entire time, you can simply drag to 20 seconds or you can right click on that line and select match layout. This will allow your text to show up the entire time of 20 seconds. Now we will adjust our answers to show up one at a time and then disappear one at a time revealing our correct answer. We've already set our first text box to display our question for 20 seconds. Now using the timeline editor let's adjust our second text box. Again we'll click on the left end of the line and drag it to appear at 2 seconds. We can drag our next text box to appear at 3 seconds. Our next box can appear at 4 seconds. Our final text box can appear at 5 seconds. Now let's set their endpoints. This will signify when the text will disappear on our layout. We'll drag our first answer text box to a disappear at 9 seconds. Then we want our next text box to display for the entire 20 seconds since this will signify our answer. Our third answer text box will disappear at 11 seconds. And our final answer text box will disappear at 13 seconds. Again, this will reveal B as our correct answer. Now that we have our layout timed out the way we want, we can quickly scrub through our layout to see how everything will appear and disappear. Once we feel that's correct, we can select the Play All button on the bottom right hand corner of Content Studio. This will play everything in real time.
notice that each element in your layout comes with two icons. The eyeball icon can hide a layer and make it visible or invisible. The padlock can lock a layer in place and its properties will not be affected even if you select your text at the very top. You can lock that layer and attempt to select it but it will not move. This is handy if you want to lock your background layer and select all your other elements and drag them and position them in a different location while not affecting your background. The majority of the time in Content Studio you will want to create individual presentations for different items of content to be displayed. However, in some cases it may be useful to composite multiple layouts within one presentation. Let's show how to create an advertisement for concessions that link multiple images. To do this, we start by building a presentation with multiple layouts. To start, create a new presentation and select Add to place new layouts in the presentation. On our first layout, we enter text for our concession stand. Now we'll begin to add our AVI files. First we'll select Add and then from our media library we'll simply drag in our AVIs to our layout. After we have created our presentation, we may wish to change the order of some of our layouts. To do this, there's no need to start over. We're simply going to use the Layout Storyboard tool, which is a clear visual guide to what is in our presentation. In this timeline, you can see we have five layouts for our presentation. But what if we want our third layout to play first, and our first layout to play third? We just need to swap the two. So at the bottom left of our screen, click on the Layout Storyboard tab, and the five icons are mini versions of our layouts. Now we'll, we'll simply click and drag to change the order. Finally, let's click back into the timeline. Here you can see we've put the layouts in the new order that we want. With the layouts in our presentation in our order, we can now add transitions to make this presentation flow even better. Go to the bottom of your screen and click on the Layout Storyboard. In between the layout thumbnails, you'll notice gray shaded buttons that look like hourglasses. When they appear like this, there are no transitions between our layouts. To add a transition, we simply click on this icon and a transition box appears. There are many transitions to choose from. We'll pick the one called Unveil In under the Wipes section. The thumbnail now turns from an hourglass to the transition we chose. To apply the same transition to all layouts, simply click the orange star on the layout storyboard and choose the transition you wish to apply. To check it out, Click Preview under the View tab or from the shortcut on the bottom right side of your screen and play all. Now that you have previewed the transition at the default speed, you can change that duration. Just click on the thumbnail to open the transition box. You'll see a new heading called Transition Properties. Click on the Change Duration button to edit the transition time, and preview again to see your changes. Feel free to go in and experiment with the different transitions you have available, and preview as needed. There are a few ways to preview your layout and play a presentation. The first way is to select the View tab. Highlight a layout in the timeline and click to play current. This will play the current layout only. Once it has stopped playing, click on the stop button and you can repeat this step for each layout. Another way to review your work is to play the entire presentation. 
Under the View tab, this time, just click Play. This plays the current presentation from the beginning. You will also find the Play and Play Current buttons on the bottom right corner of your screen. Using Dactronic Show Control Systems, we can display real-time data or statistical information as part of our layouts. We'll begin by selecting an image in Content Studio. We'll simply drag and drop from our media library and then click Import. If you notice in the same sidebar, we have a tab that's labeled Dynamic Data Library. You can receive data from a number of sources, for example, your scoreboard controller, or a DAC stat system. In the profile heading, click the arrow to reveal the profile list and click football, college, and DAC stats in parentheses. This reveals a list of sources such as game in progress or out of town scores. For more information on how to access these various stat sources, you can contact 1 800 DACtronics. Let's show a simple example of using real time data. Here, we're going to set up some stats to show our top passer of the day. From our profile drop-down menu, we'll select Game Stats. This reveals multiple categories of information to scroll through and select. Let's choose Top Pass Number 1 with our player's number. We'll simply drag this onto our layout. As you can see, it has two eights to serve as placeholders for your stats. Now we'll repeat this same step to add the player's last name. Simply drag that over into your layout. Again, we've got letters to serve as placeholders for that data. To complete our layout, we continue to drag and drop fields. Now let's do pass attempts. Then do pass completions. We can also insert a text box between those data fields, such as a dash between attempts and completions. Finally, let's drag and drop total yards. Again, we can add a text box and enter the, enter the letters YDS. Since our data is only going to show our numbers, we'll need to add text boxes to indicate what our data is. Then drag and drop touchdowns and you can add a text box with the letters TD. Now let's take a moment to move these fields around and adjust their position and appearance. We can position these text boxes individually or center them using the alignment tool. This is found in the format tab at the top of your screen. Now we can save this layout. Let's go to the icon in the upper right hand corner and hit save as. It's a best practice to have a folder labeled stats. This way we can better organize our real time data and save a file that we built to this location. Now let's build another real time data example and demonstrate a couple of more features in our dynamic data library. Let's begin by creating a brand new message. Then let's insert a picture from our media library. For this image we're just going to build a team comparison of stats. Now if you go back to your sidebar and click your dynamic data library tab, let's use the search field to find our data. We're still going to be in football, college, and DAC stats. Now begin typing home rushing yards. As you can see, as you type, your list begins to shorten. Now find home rushing yards and drag it over to your layout. Size that accordingly. Now let's search for guest rushing yards. So begin typing guest rushing. Find the data and drag it over. Let's repeat this for home passing yards and guest passing yards. 
And finally, home total yards and guest total yards. We also must identify teams with each of these sets of stats. So, let's insert a home team name. So begin typing home team name, find your data, and drag it over. Note that the characters in the field representing this data are too long for our layout. We can go into the field properties and shorten the length of our field. Now let's find our guest team name. Now we can add text boxes to describe the data being shown. Let's move our data around to make room for our text boxes. Let's insert a text box for rushing and then a text box for passing and finally a text box for total. We can position these text boxes individually or we can click the alignment tool to center them. Let's also add an outline to our text boxes by clicking each one and clicking the A and making an appropriate outline. This will adjust your positioning slightly so you will have to accommodate for those adjustments. Now let's save this again putting it in our stats folder and naming it accordingly. It's now ready to be sent out to your display. Close out of Content Studio by clicking the red X labeled Exit Content Studio. Again, for more information on setting up real-time data streams to your display, contact Dactronics at 1-800-DACTRONICS. Now we've previewed our presentation and we're happy with what we've built. Now we just need to save it out. Do this by clicking the orange application button on the upper left of your screen. Then click save. Or you can hit control S on your keyboard at any time. Now let's name a new folder. Double click on that folder and open it. And then name the presentation where it says file name. And then click save. This will save your presentation in your computer's local database. It is highly recommended that you create a folder structure that it supports your presentation by category for easy use in the future. For example, a folder for announcements, a folder for crowd prompts, headshots, stats, sponsors, team logos. The Dactronic Show Control Display Studio is a user-friendly interface that allows us to send the content we've created to our displays. Here, we can lay out custom workspaces, access event-specific production tools, and apply different themes to different workspaces. The purpose of a workspace is customization and organization for presentations for specific events. Once created, we can easily switch from one workspace to another with the simple click of a mouse. To begin, let's click on the Display Studio icon on your desktop. Now, let's open the Display Studio main menu by clicking the Display Studio button in the upper left corner. Here, you can access the basic functions to create, access, save and close workspaces, as well as edit any of your settings. Let's create a new workspace, and let's name it Dactronics, and click Save. Now, from our Display Studio button, we can see the different workspaces we can interact with, open an existing workspace, create a new one, or delete one. Within a workspace you can utilize multiple pages. An example is a workspace that has pages for a venue's different sports, such as women's basketball, men's basketball, volleyball, football, or special events. Let's familiarize ourselves with the basic layout of our workspace. Here we have our general working area, this is where we can add what's called containers to organize content we want to send to our display. There are two types of containers, quick display and scripting. Quick display containers are intended to control one sign at a time, while scripting containers can control a single or multiple signs. To bring up 
your workspace menu, all you have to do is right click on an empty space in your workspace and select the appropriate container you want to create. At the bottom of our screen is the dashboard, which features a number of things including widgets. These widgets allow us to control functions such as dimming our display. The M3 file manager is very important. Any content you want to play to your sign must be uploaded with the M3 file manager to display in order to be played. The Display Studio simply issues the command to play what you've built. For example, we can access files we've already created in Content Studio, then click on the right facing arrow to upload to our sign. The left box represents what is currently on your computer. The right box is what is currently on the display. This is two-way communication between your computer and display. So if we're working on a new computer, for example, we can access content that already exists on the display itself. By clicking the left facing arrow, we can retrieve content from the display so it doesn't have to be created from scratch. The DSTI widget monitors data coming through our system. Clicking on it reveals data such as statistics we currently have access to. When the status button to the left displays green, it means we are successfully communicating with data on our network. A red light indicates there may be a problem with the communication. Here in our workspace, we can add quick display containers that allow us to create, store, and arrange a group of quick display buttons. Each button holds content and can be added to a queue that will display on our sign. Let's begin by first naming our workspace tab. Right now it's page 01. Right click on the tab and enter rename and enter football. We can now right click on our workspace to insert new tabs for new pages. For example, basketball and volleyball. Once we've added our content, we'll be able to copy and paste between these different pages. Now that we've set up our page, let's right click on an empty space on our workspace and select New Quick Display Container. Here we see a pull down menu where we assign that container to a specific display. This box also features the default options of the container. For our purposes, let's click Save. This reveals our quick display container. We also have multiple levels of organization. We can name pages, for example, pregame, in game, postgame, or halftime. We can adjust the size of our container and drag it to the space we desire. To our right is the queue, which displays what is currently showing on the display. The item at the top of the list and above the white line is the content currently playing. Items below the white line are what will follow in order through the queue. At the bottom of the queue are the controls that allow us to play Next, Blank Sign, Clear Queue, and Loop. Loop is always on. The queue is built to constantly loop through our content. In our quick display container, we need to add buttons to hold our clips or content. Buttons are the most specialized form of storage in our display studio. So to organize and manage the content we've created, all you have to do is right click and select new button. This reveals our button creation window. To begin, click the far right to select Add. Here, we can choose a file we've created and select it as content for our new button. Clicking on a file name shows a thumbnail preview to the right. Let's open the file. The file name now appears in our button window. Note that the button will always default to the name selected. We can also use the icons below the button name to execute a number of operations such as a playlist type, select thumbnail, play mode selection, and select color. 
the upper right circle next to the button name is Immediate Play. We will demonstrate some of this in detail. For now, click Save. To demonstrate how we organize and manage multiple buttons within our Quick Display container, let's add another new button. We'll select another file, preview and open it, and click Save. So now, if we wish to play our top passer button to our display, we simply click on it. It is instantly added to our queue. Since it's our only file, it's in the top position, which means it is currently playing live on our display. Now, let's add our live video button. Again, we click on it to add it to the queue. Since we have not designated it for immediate play, it will end up in our second position, meaning it will play following our first button content. Remember that our queue is looping, so these two items will rotate. Each appears for the length of time the original file was designated in Content Studio. Each time we select a new button, the presentation appears in our queue. In this example, our Quick Display container contains multiple buttons, including our Live Video. The Live Video button will apply for systems that are capable of showing Live Video. When the button is pressed, the green can be keyed out by a video processor to show live video on the display. Let's click on our green screen button to put it into the queue. This shows us that whatever is video is currently being shot is now live on our display. But perhaps we want to set one of our other buttons for immediate play. For example, our top passer stats. Let's right click on the button, select properties, and we see our button creation window pop up. Here we can modify its properties. Click the upper right immediate play button. This designates the content of this button as immediate play. Once you hit save, that immediate play will be represented by a flame. However, this is not being added to our queue for display yet. We are currently playing live video. But the moment we need to play these top passer stats, we will click that button. It goes to the top of our queue, immediately replacing our video and playing on our display. Our display will now play our button content one time through and upon completion, return to our live video. Using the right click method, we can also force any button content to immediate play. However, by setting it through the button properties, as in our example, we have designated that button to always be immediate play. Other properties can be assigned to buttons. For example, we can choose an option for clear queue. Let's say we have a rotation of buttons in our queue. We want to clear our queue and eliminate all other rotating content files when we select this particular file to play. To set this up, we can simply right click and choose properties from the menu. This reveals the button creation window. In this window, click on the clear queue button in the top right corner. Please note, when the clear queue is selected, the immediate play option is also selected. This means that when you select the button to play in the queue, it will immediately clear all of the remaining presentations, play the presentation associated with it, and clear itself when finished. You can also manually delete items out of your queue if you don't want to clear all of them in your queue. Simply highlight a, a file that is not being played and click the trash can icon and that will clear that particular content from your queue. Now with our buttons we can also assign different colors to each button by right clicking and choosing properties then clicking the select color icon and choosing a color. This is helpful in distinguishing buttons used for sponsors versus crowd prompts for example. Within each button you can create, we can add multiple items of content to create a playlist. Let's right click to create a new button. Then we'll add and open a few different files. Hold your control key to select multiple files. Then click open, then click save. 
Now, starting with a clear queue, we click our button and it puts all our items from that button into the queue. Let's explore some other properties to this playlist by right clicking, then going to properties. If we go to our second icon, we can see playlist options. The first is normal playlist. This adds all files on our button playlist to the queue in the order they appear in the playlist. Other playlist options include shuffle playlist, next playlist, and random playlist. We're now going to demonstrate adding a shuffle playlist, a next playlist, and a random playlist. The shuffle playlist adds files to your queue in a random shuffled order. This is useful, for example, when we want to loop a group of sponsors but don't want to start with the same sponsor each time. Let's add a new button and select multiple files like we did before. We'll select the set playlist type and select shuffle playlist. Then hit save. So in this example, even though Coke is first in our list and our button properties, Pepsi winds up showing first. A next playlist will add one file at a time into the queue. For example, if we have three different animations and we're not keeping track of the animation we used previously, we can set a next playlist and our sponsors button will now add the next animation in line each time we click our sponsors button. So each time we click, it goes with Pepsi, Sprint, and into Coca-Cola. All of which are added to our queue and will loop. A random playlist operates just like a next playlist except in random order. However, note that each media item in our playlist will be cycled through before repeating our list. So the same content is never displayed back to back. Common use is when a contest is held and the media file determines the winner of the contest. For example, a video of mascots in a race. All possible outcomes are placed into the random playlist. Each time the contest is played, a random file is played ensuring a random outcome. Another idea would be if you don't want sponsor or crowd prompts to play in the exact same order each time. Note the thumbnail that appears after choosing our settings will always reflect what is going to play next. Generally, a next playlist and a random playlist will be used in conjunction with our immediate play function. If we go into a button we've created and select it for immediate play, and then we go back to our playlist options, we now only have a next playlist and a random playlist to choose from. We'll select next playlist and then hit save. We can now click the buttons we have adjusted and it will immediately play the next media item in our playlist. It appears on our display one time through and then each time we click it, it overtakes the content playing in our queue. Notice that our button name field always defaults to the name of the file selected. In the case of multiple files inside a button, we may choose to rename it, for example, to a sponsor loop. Simply right click, go to properties, and then rename your button in the name field. Then click save. Now that we have buttons in our container and content in our queue, we can control their size and placement by dragging the side of our container or using this slide bar to scale them smaller or larger. Display Studio allows us to create a quick display container that links directly to a display library, giving us a shortcut alternative to creating individual content buttons. Let's right click on our workspace and create a quick display container. Remember, each container we create is affiliated with a single sign. So for sending multiple messages to multiple signs, we need a dedicated container for each sign. So, from the display menu, we'll choose our sign. From here, if we select the Link to Library button, then select a folder or library of content, then Open, and then hit Save. We can create all our buttons in one execution. The container pulls from the library we've chosen and automatically builds individual buttons for all of the files in that library. This is a quick way to set up your content and begin organizing your sign immediately. 
Below, there is a small default icon indicating we have linked to a library. Once we have linked to a library, we cannot add new buttons to our container from a different library because we have told our software that all buttons must come from that particular library. However, we can go back into our container properties and break that link by selecting Unlink from Library. Now we can add and subtract buttons at our will, but once we've made this change, we cannot go back and link to a library again. Here's another shortcut. If we've created individual container tabs, let's say for pre-game, in-game, halftime, and post-game, instead of creating a bunch of individual buttons, we can simply go to the page we've linked to a media library and copy and paste those buttons to our other pages. Through these short tutorials, we've covered how to add text, images and video in Content Studio, and change the appearance, timing, and order of those messages. We've also reviewed how to add real-time data to your messages. In the Display Studio tutorials, we've practiced laying out workspaces and building containers to manage content for an event. We've also demonstrated how to add buttons and use them to easily manage clips and content. We've reviewed the queue and how we can adjust our playlist options from that queue. Finally, we've demonstrated real-world examples and suggested helpful shortcuts now that you're familiar with the Dactronic Show Control system. Please replay any of the individual segments for functions you may like to spend more time on, and be sure to try out all the features on your own.